Just before 3 p.m. on October 16, 2017, Daphne Caruana Galizia left her home here, in Malta. As she was driving away, the little Piju she was in exploded. A bomb that had been placed in her car detonated, killing her and engulfing the vehicle in flames. This story has all the makings of a Hollywood drama. Corruption, murder, and a social uprising that has toppled a government. And it all started with one journalist. Daphne Caruana Galizia started out writing opinion columns in her mid-20s. She began writing when she was about age 24. She was already married with three children. It was really unusual for women to go into journalism. She was doing it in her own name and she was actually expressing opinions, you know, so that broke through several boundaries at once. She went on to work for an independent newspaper and then eventually started her own blog where she published stories uncovering high-profile corruption involving Maltese politicians and businesses. And it became like the most widely read publication in Malta, sometimes hitting a million mark with readers from all over the world. In the months before her death, she had exposed an international passport selling scheme, accused the prime minister's wife of owning an offshore company, and had been investigating links between people close to Malta's prime minister and secret offshore businesses. Her death, which has all the traits of a contract killing, set off a flurry of vigils and protests in Malta at the time. Police quickly arrested three men in relation to the murder, but exactly who orchestrated it remains elusive. For almost two years, the investigation ground to a near halt, up until last month. The big break for investigators came when a taxi driver with some illicit dealings was arrested in an unrelated anti-money laundering case. In exchange for immunity, he offered up information about Daphne's murder, painting himself as the middleman. He claims that another man, named Jorgen Fennec, hired him to arrange the killing and had been the real mastermind behind the assassination, and alleges that the Prime Minister's chief of staff, Keith Shembury, had arranged to give him a government job after setting up the hit. Then, on November 20th, police arrested Jorgen Fennec as he was allegedly trying to leave the country on his luxury yacht. Fennec is one of the richest men in Malta, and Daphne had been digging into his business dealings with the government and a secret company called 17 Black. Then, the prime minister's chief of staff resigned after Fennec's arrest, and Malta's tourism minister also resigned. Before her death, Daphne had been investigating both men and the ties between the secret offshore companies they owned and 17 Black, which an investigation revealed is actually Fennec's offshore company. Leaked emails showed that 17 Black was due to make payments to both men's companies. And we should say here that all men deny any allegations of wrongdoing. People were outraged and things unraveled really quickly after that. It's become really huge for for a country that normally lets things just go by. On December 1st, Prime Minister Muscat announced that he would resign, despite not being directly linked to the murder and denying any involvement. Muscat has said that he plans to stay in office until January 2020, but civilians and opposition leaders are calling for him to step down immediately over fears that his close ties to people allegedly involved in the murder could undermine the investigation. Every day he spends in office is a day in which the investigations are endangered and a day longer in which he can destroy evidence that can incriminate him and his chief of staff. And a delegation sent by the European Parliament has called for Muscat to step down immediately. Given the speed at which things seem to be unraveling here, people are sometimes forgetting that this is a direct result of Daphne's work. It is gratifying to see her work vindicated so publicly and and so widely acknowledged around the world. It's just a great shame that she's not here to see it for herself. 